it's gonna work i think it might be live now so yeah you um yeah, it's live <laughs> you got me you got me super inspired um because i've been doing the podcast for a bit you know and I'm, i've been doing audio only and it's going good like um the way that you set it up you use this service podbean and it goes out to like spotify and it goes out to itunes and all this sort of stuff and it's been really comfortable for me you know because i don't yeah. have to set a camera up and you know you don't have to i don't know you, when when you've got a visual portion of it it just like it changes things for some reason um yeah. and so when when you said to me the other day like oh do video i was like yeah maybe i should just do video so this is this is it. I think video I think it's more on. interesting in video because people can see actually how our reaction to the conversation is and how we are in person. Because some people that don't even know who you are, and they're yeah. just like, "Who is this guy talking? I want to see his face." I I play sometimes. I play video games, and and I have some friends on on the on online that I play with them, and I have no idea how they look like, but the voice is so familiar. That they look like they are my friends, but I don't know who they are. <laughs> yeah. So maybe yeah. you have some people watching your videos that are like this, like they don't know how you look like, but they know your voice. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool. That's it now, and we're live, and apparently a couple of people are on as well. So it's Facebook and and YouTube. Um, the way that I'll do this, I've got a couple of questions, but as you said, like you just like, what a you want to keep it not too planned, the Petro yeah, way. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool to getting. Be <laughs> getting up at one o'clock uh on on a monday morning <laughs> quarantine life <laughs> yeah. i um i can't even remember the last time i saw you man like uh fuck, was it were you at the last art of motion and i i was in matera you were there uh no oh okay yeah so the, the art of motion before the before was 2017 i think yeah santorini were you there Yes, competed. the last one. Yeah, the last one in Santorini. I competed, and I got qualified yeah. to go to the next one. But then there was no next one, so I went. I didn't went. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. I saw that um, online. You haven't been training a lot lately. What's been going on there? Is it just because of quarantine? Uh, it's also motivation. Just sometimes now I'm motivated again because I'm out of shape. But when I was in shape, I just got to a point that I was going all the same, to, all, always to the same spots, the same people all the time, the same things. And it's kind of hard to be creative in, in the same places all the time. So if you don't travel so often, especially with this quarantine thing happening, nobody was going out. I just didn't got the motivation to go out anymore. But now mm. that I lost some power, I, I got motivation. I want to get it back. I <laughs> <laughs> see I've been I've been the opposite during quarantine. I've been coming off an injury over the last uh I, I I fucked my knee about a year about a year ago and had I don't know, actually it'd be interesting to talk to you about this because if you've ever experienced this, um I did a knee injury, um, my right knee, and I thought that I had like torn a meniscus. Um that was what I thought I had done. Um and I went and got all the scans and everything, and it turned out I did bone bruising. I didn't even know that was a thing, but apparently bone you can. Bone bruising, you, okay. Yeah, so you can bruise your bones the same way that you get a, a, a bruise on your skin. Um, yes. you, you can do bone bruising. And so it turns out it was just bone bruising. So it actually wasn't that bad of an injury. Um, but around the same time, I, I, I've been doing a lot of plyometric training. I was training for a competition here in Australia. I really wanted to, like, you know, get strong and try and do like a skills comp and do well in it. Um, and it got close to the the comp, and uh, I woke up one day. Uh, I was actually just after the comp. I woke up, and I just completely lost power in my legs. You know when you go to do like a precision jump, and you, like you sort of bend. Yeah, you go to <laughs> you bend your legs, and you're about to jump. When that power comes in, there was nothing there. Like I mean, like jumping this this far off the ground was hurting me. Um, oh. Yeah, and it's been it's been like about it was like a four or five month journey of, of getting power back and I'm like just on the other side of it now. So I'm starting to or I'm I'm getting my power back. There's still a little bit of pain in my leg. But have you experienced anything like that ever? Yeah, the bro uh, bone bruising it happens often. For example, 
uh, like you know when you land on the middle of the feet and your heel starts to hurt like hell for like one week or two it's probably the same thing because yeah. it's no tendon it's not just muscles it's probably just the bone and the the, the materials of your feet are like fucked up <laughs> yeah but yeah I never, was... had, I never had like an injury that i have to stop for a long time mm. just yeah the, the yeah. mess i stopped was now the quarantine time Mm, yeah, so how long have you been training now? Uh, 14 years, I guess. 14 years. Yeah, that's yeah. Quite, that's kind of what I would like to sort of talk about a little bit in this is um, like just that, you know, the concept of training to last because, you know, I've, I've met you here and there over the years and you, you seem like you're outside of right now because of quarantine. Uh, you say that you haven't been training, but I'm sure you're still <laughs> a fucking beast. You seem to look. <laughs> You, you seem to maintain like a, a pretty solid uh, level, you know, throughout your whole parkour career. Um, like what's like, what training do you do? You've got your little pull up bar in the room that I see in Insta Instagram and that, but do you do a lot of preparation training outside of the actual movement stuff? How have you, how Not have really you approached? Anymore. Like I used to yeah. train a lot uh, when I was younger, like from the beginning of parkour until middle, <laughs> I had like people training with me that they were all inspired by David Bell methods and blah blah blah. So they they transferred this to me and they kind of made me do it because they thought there was the the way to start. So they I did a lot of condition in the beginning, like stairs workout and quadruple movement and a lot of push ups and pull ups, all this kind of stuff. But nowadays, I just go out and I don't think about what I'm going to train. Sometimes I have a goal and I go to the gym, I want to do this fleet just to try it. And then I do it and okay, that's fine. But normally, I just go out and have fun with the friends. That's parkour to me. It's not about uh, being the best or anything. It's just about challenge yourself every day, being strong and keep going, keep moving until you want to move. Because I think if you don't want to move, you don't want to do some certain jump, but you can feel pressure from some people from some or from the environment around you that just like pressuring you to do something and you don't feel it, you shouldn't do it. You just should listen always your body and kind of go with the flow because you have a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, for me, you know, I've definitely come back to movement more, more so in the last year, like especially through this injury because... I think one of the things that happened to me is I was I was conditioning too hard, you know. I was I was <laughs> focusing too much on on lift uh, the plyometric training, like I was doing plyometric like circuits rather than just being out training, you know. And I got really caught up in this movement world and um, strength training. And I think what was going on was I was I was just overtraining too much because I'd be lifting weights, I'd be doing plyometric training, and then two to three days a week, I was also going out and doing parkour as well. And <laughs> the second that now I've taken, as you said, there's like a, a certain preparation that you need to do for your body, right? There's like a shell that we need to create around their bodies, and a lot of us do that in the last in the first couple of years of training through repetition and just training so much. Yes. Um, but but there, yeah, there is a, just a conditioning that comes can come from your body, and it is really cool because you do have some of the top athletes these days, like your Ed Scotts and Joseph Hendo, and that, and that you know they're performing at like the highest level, um, and you know they've got um, what's his name, Movement Power, who does all their programming uh, for them. Um, but I don't know if that's necessarily the way that everyone needs to train. Um, and coming back to like some of the david bell forms of training he was just out doing the actual you know stefan vigoro talks about it so much you know <laughs> they you know their training was just out doing prison precision jumps hundreds thousands of precision jumps i think your body it's a tool that adapts to what you do no matter what you're doing your body is going to kind of adapt everyone has a certain form of adapting some people have bigger limbs and bigger arms bigger legs whatever your body shape is you will adapt and you will, uh, if you focus on your strengths, you will develop your st style in a way that nobody will have. So, for example, uh, I don't know, like Tim Champion is really big, long, so he has super huge swings. He's 
focus on that, he gets the biggest strings in the world. Nobody can beat uh, the size of the swing. If I swing, <laughs> if I am short, I will never reach a big swing. But if I'm sh short and agile and he's big, he cannot be so agile. So I think you should focus in your strength and kind of train your, your things. Like you can always expand them and try all, all overall things, of course, like Dom, Dom trains everything and he becomes yeah. good in everything. But there is certain things that is more, um, it's more his thing to do. Yeah, taking heavy fucking drops. That seems yeah. to be his thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think your body starts to adapting since an early age. Like, no matter what sport you do. So imagine we started around 16, right? You also start around 16, 17, whatever. Yeah. The yep. people they used to say back in the days, ah, parkour is meant to start like 16 because your body is developed, blah 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 blah. I think if you start earlier, you get better results. Maybe your body has some, I don't know, doesn't grow as much, whatever. But you start to get strength since the beginning. You your body starts to realize that you need to do certain things, certain moves, and he adapts over the years, like climbers. If you climber, if you're a climber for like you start climbing at 30, like I'm 29 and I'm starting climbing, your finger strength it will grow. But if you start since you're a kid, your tendon will develop just for that. You know, it gets mm -hmm. stronger and stronger. And I think the, with parkour is the same. Of course, when you're younger, you have to be careful with the impacts and be, you don't have so much technique, so you kind of have to grow slowly but your body you will progress like with you yeah i mean we're definitely seeing that with some of the the younger generation that are coming up now and the progression rate of some of the young swedish kids particularly there's there's a couple <laughs> of the, the young swedes that are just whipping out like yeah they're 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 picking it up at that young age that their body is just developing and you you watch them transition from being kids into like um teenagers into men and yeah. they're just developing like the perfect parkour body um which is <laughs> yeah it's fucking awesome to see and what's pedro's style then if if uh tim champions is swings yours would be speed <laughs> right i don't know i like to to go fast and move and go up stuff like this but it's imagine being in the nature in the rocks that's my natural habitat i just like to to go up the hill, up the, the roof, whatever. I like to go up stuff. <laughs> yeah. I remember, um, I remember, uh, uh, it was, crap, was it crap? One of the crap invader events where they ran a speed comp. Um, and I remember competing in the speed comp and I, I think it was one of the years that you won it. And I can't, I don't think, I don't think I raced you. I think you were like the heat next to me um and i got knocked out in like the heat before and it would have been against you and so you raced like the person that i raced and <laughs> I, I remember yeah. that day watching you fucking run that speed course it was absolute insanity man <laughs> but the speed course back in the, in that time it was really simple at least that one that one was like just some going down bars and then there was like a a, a container and then yeah a, yeah then another container and then some two walls or a rail or whatever and then another container so kind of was just climb up climb up climb up yeah it was a, a straight straight line head to head you you won that year right i won one year i don't know which one was maybe 2015 or something like this did you I, um do you do any then do you do any for speed training then are you, are you still have you are you competing really. at all for speed comps yeah i did the first competition in 2011 world uh parkouring championships you know remember you remember this one the barclays yeah no, not, yeah not, yeah. Bar, not barclays uh parkouring world championship something like this in, yeah it was, oh, was it in germany here. was it yeah it's here i broke the trophy but it's here look this one <laughs> <laughs> yeah parkouring speed competition yeah uh the the, uh, the year before louis louis alchemy and andre chapellas the line team guys they went and they i was completely against competition in that time i remember and louis now uh, 
after that starts to be more against than it was before. But anyway, so Luis went and he told me, no, no, this is really cool. Everyone goes and is just training with each other. We have a lot of fun. The, there is no competition vibe. We just do it in the moment and then we train the whole the time and we travel. It's really cool. So I had one of my best friends in that time because I had no money. I was poor Peter. Uh, he bought me a ticket to Germany so I could participate in the parkouring world championships. So I went and of course me and Luis, we had no place to stay. I remember that someone gave us house. <laughs> we trained every day, every day before, after the competition, be like a week before we were there, we trained every day. There was no day that we didn't train. And in the moment of the competition, I remember I was kind of nervous because it was first time, <laughs> but it was just there was two competitions, speed and style. And a lot of people that are still training were there, like Valdi Mueller. You know, yeah. You know this guy? Hey, that's <clears throat> so awesome. Uh, he dropped Paolo. off for so many years. He dropped off for so many years and he's come back and he is a fucking beast, man. He's he always been beast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Paulo Tavares also were there. Uh, guys from French Run Family. Uh, yeah, Kevin Fleury, a bunch of guys. So yeah, I did it, and I end. Wait, I end up in the. Um, sorry, my so headphones. Good. I end, end <laughs> up in the first place for the first time, and I realized, okay, competing is not what I thought it was, and it's not gonna destroy the parkour how it is, and didn't destroy, but somehow changed it because nowadays people just train for I want to be art of motion champion and stuff like this, but it's what it is. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting though because you've you've done pretty well over the years in the art of motion as well, and um, like you, you've made the finals what three times, two times, two times, and like your style does not really match what would usually get rewarded uh, no. <laughs> for the art of motion. What do you think? What's your mentality going into that? Because what I've noticed from watching is you usually have sort of, uh, and maybe why you don't do as well in the finals is you usually have like. A mo like a, a pretty extreme sort of starting move, something that really captures captures you know you you that massive precision hit to the windmill drop down, <laughs> and then just pretty much do a very parkoury line to the bottom um, with with some flips in it. Do you yeah. have any specific mentality that you got you went into for those to to do well? Was it just to get to the finals, or did you feel like yeah, for, there was a potential you could win? Like, or did you not have a second run ready, or yeah, no, or were no, you just no. there I to have a good time? I had a second run. Everything is correct. Uh, all the options. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I I had a second run planned because uh, art of motion is not just skill. It's a lot of just if you understand what the judges are looking for. If you can fulfill the categories that they are judging, you can make it through. No matter what style you have, you can make it through. They're looking yeah, yeah, for yeah. difficulty. Uh, a double flip or a super hard flip can be as hard as can be a parkour jump. It doesn't matter if it's a jump, if it's parkour or if it's a flip, both can, can match difficulty. Of course, with a flip, you can always have more flips and jumps. I don't think you can make so much hard jumps because it's quite hard to find hard jumps in one line because mm. for jumps you depend more in the environment than with the flips, I guess. But yeah, this is just the difficulty. Then the creativity is the same. You can be creative in parkour and you can be creative in, in flips. It's how you use the environment is the creativity. It's not about what you're just doing. Uh, flow, of course, with parkour, it's easier to be fluid than with flips. So you get points up on flow. It's just easier. Mm -hmm. uh, and what else? There is the execution. Execution in parkour is also easier than, in my opinion, because I do parkour more than flips. But I think it's easier to be well executed parkour than flips because flips, so many flips, I get dizzy. I don't know how these guys do like seven flips or eight in a, <laughs> in a line. Man, I do three flips. I'm like, start like, what the fuck? Where I am? I cannot, I don't know where I was going anymore. So I just do simple flips, but I try to do in the right moment, in the right time. But yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you were very much, very much playing the scorecard, right? Trying to tick as as much of each difficult, like each category as possible. So you you'd tailor your run very much based on on how you can stay true to your style, but also tick what the judges are wanting. Yes, and I try to surprise a little bit somehow, like in in a way that they don't expect. Oh, Pedro did did. I was not expecting because doesn't matter if if you're good. Uh, in in something or not, if the judges know you, they will expect something from you. Doesn't matter if sure, they sure. shut down this or not, they will expect. They will know. Pedro is gonna throw some big jump. Imagine Alfred Scott does uh, something really big in parkour, like a really big precision to a rail going down, whatever. The and if I do it the same way, the judges will give more uh, difficulty to uh, Alfred than for me in the head, even if they think it's the same difficulty. But if I yeah. do a flip, a really hard flip as well, they will be surprised with this and they will be like, oh, Peter did this flip, what the fuck? And they think this is hard. But if uh, Nate Weston does the same flip, I think mm. they will be like, eh, it's just Nate Weston doing his thing. That, that that's very interesting like there is a cognitive bias that comes on and, and that's very much the case it's been talked about before but this could be one of the reasons why um the sort of uh the the unknown athlete can do so well right we've seen this case over and over again where these guys that nobody knew came in through the qualifiers um and made it through qualifiers made it through first day um like on-site quality fires made it through first day heats and got into the finals and and have dominated because the the judges don't have an expectation they're not there's yes. no cognitive bias there they they're not expecting they're not watching Pedro get up and go okay we know what he's running and scoring against that bias they're just like this is totally fresh to them so they've got the fresh eyes and they're able to actually watch it from a genuine place i mean they, there could be an argument made for that they have no idea what's coming from a new guy but they have idea what's coming from me or from someone that they know of course but yeah we cannot change that unless just only new guys compete <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um, you also you also asked about uh, why i didn't make to the finals or why i didn't uh, podium or whatever so every time i went to the finals i fuck up my lines so even if mm. the, the if if the line was correct maybe i could podium maybe not Depends on how well it goes, but I always fucked up something. Mm, <laughs> mm. Um, oh, I wonder if I wonder what's going to go on this year uh, with Art of Motion. Every, the whole world's basically stopped, so I, I guess maybe no more uh, Art of Motion this year. Yeah, maybe pause. And oh, it's good because Matera people didn't like Art of Motion at all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe they it could they could get creative with it. They could do some sort of online competition. That could be kind of cool. I know yeah. uh, Giles. Giles is running a um, an online video competition because of COVID. Uh, yes, but he sends is... the video to the people, and the people have to edit, right? Yes, right. that is right. Yeah, maybe like they did with the qualifiers for the first year. Maybe that can just be the main competition, and everyone can submit something to the art of motion. <laughs> <laughs> well, video, um, video, video competition. Maybe I don't think they will make it if if there is no live event. I don't think they will make anything. They just wait. For next year mm. talking about videos um line team tracer my favorite team of all time <laughs> are we ever going to get another video maybe i don't know man we are all split out from the <laughs> like in the country and one is in spain so me and luis and afonso three are in lisbon and andrea yeah well. but he's not training anymore and then there is Sergio, the blonde guy, he yeah, has a daughter. He has a daughter, and he lives in the south with and is he with is another he, guy. Is he performing? Like, is he doing some like pirate performance or something? I see. Was, I see some stuff. He was. He was until this year. This year, he's not doing it anymore, uh, and that thing is closed anyway. But he was not going this year. He's just quit because he's tired of being a pirate. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> 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 he has done that for like five years or something like this. I was there with him in the first year. Me and him were the first two pirates. And then uh, I went out and I put Antonio in my place. 
And then from that moment, I was just like four months there and then I went to Norway. I was like, no, this is cool, but it's not for me. I don't want to be stuck in the same routine every day. I need to see the world. I need to jump around. I need to go to gyms. But he stayed there for five years and he, he was happy about it. So, yeah. Um, Good. Yeah, I saw some, I saw a clip pop up on Facebook of, of I think, I think I saw it on his Facebook and it looked epic. It looks like he's still a beast as well, which is, is, yes, is really cool. Is. <laughs> Sergio is an overall uh, guy. He does a little bit of everything very good, but he's mm. not training so often. He trains sometimes. Mm. Yeah. But I mean, but so, and so would you say you and Lewis are the only two active sort of within that team still or? No, no, no. Everyone kind of is active, kind of not. They all can train still, they all can move, but not everyone is motivated. That's the major problem after so many years of training is motivation. And I guess that's why a lot of people uh, quit, quit and stop. Not quit, but kind of like slow down. Like, remember the first guys that inspired the whole world, like Daniel Labaka, Chase Armitage, and Three Run, and all these guys, Phil Doyle. There was a moment after MTV Parkour Challenge, they kind of all poof, stopped, disappeared. And I yeah. think that was kind of like of motivation in that time. I'm not sure about that, but probably was the same reason. They were kind of like, okay, it's always the same, and then the same, and the same. And now, a few years later, they start to come back and they, they, they're enjoying it again. So what keeps you motivated? Because for me, it's been like, it's been, I had a, I probably had one year, one year prior to my accident that I, I lost complete motivation. Um, and that was just like some emotional stuff. But outside of that, I, I've, I've had a passion for training for most of the time. Um, but then, then after my accident, like, I was more passionate than ever that like as soon as I thought had the thought of not being able to train again it was like okay that's that's it what's kept you motivated what keeps Pedro motivated what keeps you bouncing around all over the fucking place <laughs> I just like to go out and jump <laughs> I yeah. don't think there is any reason for me to be motivated I just like to do it and I am re really lazy like if I'm home in the couch <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't really want to go out. You know, there is this, <laughs> this strength inside that keeps me in the couch. And, but if I go out and I start moving or just go out of the door and walk, I want to train straight away. But if I don't go out, I want to be in the couch. <laughs> yeah. Just to give perspective to anyone that might be listening to this um Pedro, Pedro just before the podcast and is like, I didn't know. I don't know what the time difference is between our countries. So when you said like I'm still in bed, I was like, <laughs> I looked at my watch and like clock. I'm like, oh, it's probably like eight a.m. It's like one thirty p.m. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. One so you're just like, no, yeah, but actually, I saw actually, blog. in when quarantine, was... in quarantine, I've been wait, waking up very early every day, six six a.m. I'm like. But today, uh, like two days ago, I had friends home and we stayed until late playing PlayStation and that fucked up my schedule again. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Peter Parkour stuff that you were doing, is, who is Peter Parkour? Are you still involved with that? Are you still doing no. much there? No, no, no. Peter Parkour was a guy in America. He's a guy from Pakistan that lives in America that he wanted to start a parkour business. And he contacted me. He had a plan. He said that he had a plan, a brand, blah, 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 name, everything. And I was like, okay. And then we talked. He showed me the logo that he made. He showed me, he told me the name, Peter Parkour. I, of course, I didn't think it was cool. I thought it was lame. Peter Parkour, like, uh, that's lame. Come on. And the logo was, like, even worse. Okay. But then after... But it worked. <laughs> Yes, he had a point. He had a point. The name <laughs> it stays in the head. It's easy. And I'm Pedro and I do parkour. So, okay, can match. But the logo, we changed. <laughs> I couldn't stick with that logo. But yeah, we had our differences. And of course, he has his way of thinking. I have mine. And I know certain things don't work. And he thinks it works because we didn't try it yet. But I've seen it happen before. And 
well, disagree, 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 and it, I just like quit. Basically, mm. we went each yeah. one for each side. Sometimes yeah. you you like if you're not doing something that you believe hundred percent, it's just better not doing because you're just wasting time of your life that you can put this energy into something else. Mm -hmm. the, the, I mean, the the company itself did grow quite a lot, right? Like I saw the Facebook, it's like 500. You, 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 you did, you created quite a lot of gr good content for, for, uh, for their, that, that brand while you were there. Yeah. Yes. Like when I put, when I go for something, I am hundred percent on it. I, I'm not like going to be like, okay, uh, today I do something tomorrow no i just do okay today i still didn't film anything i go out until i do something and i try to keep the brand like i think in ways okay what video can work to go viral and i just do it but for my personal account not really i do like whatever i train i film some stuff and i do it and sometimes i like to be creative and do some youtube videos uh, i'm gonna start doing that more so it also brings me some income and i don't have to rely on brands yeah but so you are you are you active on youtube right now have you been uploading regularly not really but i have videos that went really good and i'm still earning some main, uh, some money from youtube sometimes so mm -hmm. i thought why not putting effort into it because i already put some money, so many effort into other things that are not even for me why not this and I like to do videos. This is a, a thing I like to do. I, I, like if you see here, there is like video equipment everywhere. I like to produce. I like to film and edit and create some something entertaining. I don't like to do yeah. movies. Like I'm not doing a storytelling or whatever. But I like to create something that people get, start to watch and be like, oh, what the fuck? And brings different emotions to you. So I... The videos that are working the best in my YouTube is POV. I yeah. don't know why, but it's what works the best. Yeah, so I, I've, I've given a lot of thought to why it is POVs are working. And I guess, like, we can split this up into two parts. But for me, I mean, the reason I think parkour is stuck around, I think the reason that it will continue to grow, and I don't think that we've the sport has sort of flatlined yet I, I think it's going to continue to grow is and what it's got over something like skateboarding is is it's, it's so relatable right like um sometimes it's very hard for someone to put themselves in the shoes of someone on a skateboard because a lot of people can't stand on skateboards so mm -hmm. although they think it's cool um it's it's hard for them to have perspective on that but everyone walks everyone interacts with the world so it's very easy for people to understand how how difficult some of the stuff so there's that relatability so then when you add pov to it not only is there relatability then you're then you're getting the perspective of the person doing the jump so it's it's very easy for people to put themselves in the eyes of of the person then the last part that i'm going to add to it and i think where parkour is going to experience the biggest growth we ever have is when virtual reality virtual reality becomes mainstream i think <laughs> the number one tool that that computer game creators um and movies i think like parkour athletes are going to have a field day and have so much work um and, and yeah so i think cool. it's this re relatability like and uh, you can see it in the numbers like look at scott bass and it's like ampi sound like he just viral after viral is just pov he put one out yesterday um that was in rio de janeiro and it's just boom blows up straight away you have had a lot of success with povs storo you know Debatably, yes. had backbone backbone their channel off off it. It's almost it's almost like a sure thing with parkour. You know, make a good POV video, you're gonna get a million views. Um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So for now, for now, because it always is changing. Everything kind of like gets too much after park again. <laughs> <laughs> These headphones. Um, well, I I don't agree with you hundred percent. In the people can feel how difficult things that we do like the if they are hard or not because most of people get impressed with things that are not hard <laughs> and the actually hard things just passed and, the, and they don't have reaction i've i've watched people watching videos a lot of times and i notice 
the most common things, the things that are more impressive for muggles, are things that we don't even put so much effort into doing. But stuff that is really hard and technically hard and scary, sometimes they don't realize how the things like are so hard. Yeah, yeah. It's the classic do a do a backflip after back you've just flip. done like yeah, after you've just done like a double twist and the kid goes, Do a backflip and you're like but can you man. do a backflip? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> classic, classic meme. Yes. Um but yeah, VR though, it's gonna be super interesting when that because you know VR is definitely building um, more and more, and in the next, I reckon, five to ten years, it's going to be VR headsets everybody, everywhere. And I think parkour, it's going to get another huge amount of growth when that happens. That would be cool. Yeah, I, I actually would like to try a, a VR that you can control yourself while moving, like arms and everything. Because I have VR, but you only have these two remotes that it's your hand. So basically, just your eyes and your hands. But what about mm. the whole body? Because normally, playing video games, I I just feel like, fuck, I can do more than this fucking character. <laughs> yeah, Why yeah, cannot yeah, yeah. Go up? <laughs> Why you cannot go up on this? I could go up on this. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. The game's too restricted. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes it's overpowered. But yeah. So... With with what I usually do on the podcast, like it's it's been pretty business and marketing um, sort of backed, and we don't have to go too deep into it. But I, you know that a lot of my audience, the people that are listening to it, are sort of newer athletes, people who maybe are in only their you know first couple of years of the journey, and a lot of those guys are usually looking. You know, I've I've had a lot of messages from people that that are transitioning out of. Um, whatever career they're doing to becoming a parkour teacher or p potentially wanting to be a pro athlete. Um, and so, you know, something I'd like to talk about a little bit is sort of ways that athletes, especially someone like you who has managed to to live off the sport for, for over a decade, you know, just give a little bit of advice and a little bit of a takeaway of, of um, it doesn't have to be, you know, too specific, but the sorts of sort of ways that you support yourself and the way that you think about doing that, that you're you're able to pay rent and that you're able to sort of travel when you need to. Um, I know, you know, you've got over a hundred thousand Instagram followers. So, you know, if you have any tips for any of those guys that, that are a bit younger and maybe looking to do what you've done, you know, yeah, I'll let you take that away. Yeah, I think just first of all you have to make sure this is like what you like to do the most. If you're just looking at parkour, okay, I'm going to be living off parkour and this is not my passion, but I think it's cool and I want to try it. That's the wrong way. You should always go for what you like and that will be the first key and the most important one to be successful. You need to be passionate about what you're doing because if you're not passionate, you're not going to put so much effort into it. You're going to feel that you're putting effort instead of feeling that you want to do the thing. So work hard every day go out train make sure you're gonna be good athlete first don't think about uh instagram don't think about anything just think about putting yourself in a better self so make yourself stronger make yourself go to the limits of what you can bring you, yourself to like just go out train hard every day every day every day and always want more like you're happy what you what you have achieved but you can always get more and always search for more and besides that if you want to live off it you don't have to be just a good athlete you need to think about what you're doing as well so for example uh, to be able to pay a rent, you need to make money. Which ways can you make money? There is many ways in parkour you can make money. Like we talked before, you can be a pirate. <laughs> you can be, <laughs> <laughs> you can coach. You can be a YouTuber. You can be an influencer. You can have a lot of performance jobs. You can do stunt work. You can do many things. But most of important one is moving. So moving in a way that you go to your computer and you look up for what's your goal. Uh, I want to be a stuntman. Okay, stunt companies in my country. I'm going to look for all of stunt companies in my country. I'm going to message them all, send the email. Hello, I'm Pedro. I'm blah, blah, blah. 
20 years old and I like parkour. I do this for many years now and I would love to be a stuntman. I'd love to do this kind of work, blah, blah, blah. Just send emails. You will get replies. You will get no replies. You will get no's. You will get yes. But keep trying. Keep trying is the key, I think. Yeah. So you've definitely sent a few out. You've done a fair bit of outreach in your time by the sounds of it. <laughs> yes, you have to move. If you don't do the things, they will not always come to you. Sometimes they come to you. Like because you put effort in so many ways that you get recognition and after you get recognition, people get send work to you sometimes. Like wait, mm. wait, <laughs> this time, <laughs> this time was the phone. Like sometimes, uh, like one time I got the job in India, uh, stunt work, and it was Corey from Tempest. I appreciate Corey. Thank you very much. It was an awesome job. And Corey just, they needed a guy that looked like Indian. Like if you put some hair here, I, I could look Indian. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy messaged me in, a, in like Bob Brown, it's a stunt coordinator in America. He messaged me and I was like, this mail doesn't look real, looks fake because of the text and how it was. But then I replied and it ended up to be like one of the most profit jobs I've ever done. <laughs> did they did they pay you in cash? Yeah, US dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Not dollars, euros. They pay me euros. <laughs> yeah. How was your experience working in India? I've I've worked, I've worked on a couple of produ production Indian productions, but not in India. I've never actually been to oh. India, but I've filmed in like Singapore with uh, Akshay Kumar and uh, in Thailand actually with with another guy. Um, it's a crazy experience working on Indian sets, man. Like. Like <laughs> I know, safe, I know. safety, safety is not their first priority. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, just for the concern, uh, the stunt coordinator and the stunt <laughs> team all were Americans in Indian set. Um, so yeah, it was very, okay. very, very funny. <laughs> yeah, one yeah, time, yeah. One time there was a car here and I was coming from behind the car and while the car moving and I do a side flip over the car and land in the other side, the car keeps going and there is no cars coming in the second row. So I do a side flip over here and this row, there was no cars. There was one stopped. And as soon as I did one time, second time I go, I, I go running and before I do the side flip, I see the car in the second lane, it starts to moving. And I abort immediately because I'm aware of surroundings. If there was a guy that is like this, completely like, oh, focus on the side flip, he will just get boom from with a second car. So the stand coordinator got so mad. Who's this guy? Who's this guy? Who yeah. hired this guy? And nobody talking. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> yeah. They they have an, a very cool way of filming. Um, some of them like ooh, cool, interesting way. Um, you know they <laughs> they get they get the on some of the chase scenes that I did. They would set up three cameras, so they'd just have like uh, they'd have three reds set up, and it was one shot. It's like all right, you've got one attempt because they they move so quickly for these productions. You know they they're pumping some of these Bollywood films. They're pumping out so quick. The the director would be a, it'd be a chase scene, and it was quite intense. He's like, we've got one shot, we've, we're capturing it from every angle, and you just got to hit it one bang every time. I'm just like, oh, that's shit. good. That's, that, that's perfect. You don't have to do more than one time. For me, it's yeah. not like this. Sometimes I have to repeat, 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 repeat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, we just got a little comment in the chat from T Tammy. Uh, he said he's watching from India. So shout out to T Tammy. Hello from India. Yeah, You've oh, got nice. it. <laughs> Yeah, I've been in India like two times. Like we were talking before about hard work and how to get um, how to get out there and stuff like this. So I, I got this job and I was five weeks in Hyderabad in India. And these five weeks, I had five uh, days off, one day off per week. And these five days off, I did one POV and I did Golconda video. So a video with parkour, with Schiffer. I brought Schiffer from Peter Parkour. And we did a video in Golconda in the castle, 
and also a POV in the city, in the, in the streets of India, that I got chased by a dog. I don't know if you've seen this video, but got viral as 3 million views on, on YouTube. Mm. So, so I feel like I feel like what you're saying, rather than there being like um, specific tactics that people need to follow to to make money, it's definitely uh, the um, the sort of mind mind mindset that you're in of just using as you know being as productive as possible, using yes. your time as as efficiently as possible. A true parkour mindset uh, way of thinking exactly. about it, and if you one passionate about the sport which is the bare essential right like if you want to do this as a career then you're going to want to be out training every day um but very much have the mindset of creating using the platforms that are available these days and we've got so many look at tiktok and the way that that's blowing up right now <laughs> um so yeah. i guess very much it's the mindset of of creating and being okay with creating, putting it out there. Jason talks about this quite a lot as well, you know, just putting your work out there and creating the work that you want to create and then someone's going to pay you to do it eventually. Someone will look at, if you know, if you get 3 million views, 4 million views on a video, you never know who's watching that content, right? Like, look at yes, what Story exactly. did. Story, Story just worked with Michael Bay, right? Like, how did Michael Bay find them? It's likely it was probably off a YouTube video. Someone probably YouTube, showed yeah. him, you know, showed like this. So if Story had never done the process of creating the way that they had, um, then Michael Bay would never have found them. They would have just been these guys from the UK, but them putting themselves out there for five, six years and then got them on a set with, you know, Michael Bay and fucking what's his face, Ryan Reynolds. Like, who, you know, do the dots of how that journey went, you know, like that's crazy. I think, I think it's also like not having so much expectation for everything you post. Just do because you want to do it and make sure you're proud of it. You can post it, but don't be expecting success, immediate success from what you post. Because you will get disappointed. 100% of the times you will get disappointed. Sometimes there is like a surprise. That's good. If you're not expecting, it's always good. If you expect too much, you go get disappointed and then you dismotivate. If you don't expect too much, you're always happy. And you're always creating because you like to create. And that's how it should be. Yeah, there's definitely a lot to be said about, especially with YouTube as well. Um, I think, I think that's why there's been a bit of a drop off with the whole YouTube game um, with parkour, right? Like, it's 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 sad for me. Like, obviously we're like old school guys, so we definitely are attached to the time that parkour was was big on YouTube, right? Like, at least I am. I won't speak for yes. you, but I think Sydney parkour, woohoo! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and and I um. I feel like because of some of the numbers that people get um, on Instagram and on uh, on Instagram and, and TikTok, people, you know, and a lot of people aren't getting the same numbers on YouTube, they've sort of just wrote it off. Like, and I, I don't believe all views are equal. I don't believe that, I, I, I think, I think if you got ten, if you got a million views on 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 TikTok and ten thousand views consistently on YouTube, I would take ten thousand views on YouTube any day, especially if they're like, um, especially if the video is four to five, four to ten, five to ten minutes long, and people are watching like seventy to sixty to seventy percent of that video, because when you've got the full attention of the person when they're watching on YouTube. But I think because people see that number, like once upon a time, 10,000 views on YouTube was a lot of views, right? Yes. But now people like now so many okay. people like, yeah. And, and so I think <laughs> a lot of people get caught up with this. They, they'll start putting content out on YouTube and it's like some of my stuff, because I'm, I'm being so inactive on YouTube for so long. Like some of my stuff gets like two, 300 views, you know? Um, yeah. But it's, but for me, I understand, like, if I want to build that, I'm just going to have to keep doing this um, and put it out. Yeah. And and the, then YouTube will start to trust me again after about maybe a month or two months. And then they might put me on a suggested feed. And then maybe one of my videos might go here or there. But that first bit of resistance when people don't see that, you know, maybe they get 50 views or 100 views and just stop. That's never going to end up in that end, end result. You're never going to get there if, unless you break through that tension and keep posting. 
Yeah, because people are waiting for getting success, instant success. And Instagram is much easier. You go out and you have a phone, you just film something quick. People like to be swiping and see something quick. They, they watch it and, ah, nice, like, like. It means nothing. It's just a mm. two, double tap. Sometimes I even double tap by accident because of, I'm already <laughs> used to it. It means nothing. <laughs> Like on YouTube, on YouTube, it's also good because you have live memories in video format. In, yeah. In Instagram is more like a, a small diary of what happened in that day. But in YouTube, you can c create something that once you get old, you look back and you watch your videos and like, oh, this was a good day. This was a good week. This was a good time, whatever, good summer. It's good, good memories. Don't, yeah, the don't one just of my... look at it as a, a way to grow and be thing. Just something for yourself. It's also good. Yeah, I mean, one of my favorite things in the world is going back and, and watching like Farang videos, right? Like there's four or five mm -hmm. years of just like pure epicness and just putting a playlist on and watching those through is one of the coolest things. Um, and then like... I, I, you probably have as well, but I've been uploading to YouTube for 10 years. So I've got some stuff, that, a lot of it's on private these days because it's like really fucking cringeworthy, but still it's, it's, it's fun to go and watch back on that. Like first ever video parkour video that you Whoa. made. Like <laughs> I was like yes. long haired, skinny, um, at school doing parkour. Um, but they were still like four or five minute videos. You know what I mean? It really like encapsulates that moment in time. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's so cool to have that to look back on, and that's one of the things that's inspiring me to to um, want to put putting out more content again. Now is is like to have that for now. It's like okay, I'm 30 now, but you know, in 10 years' time, it's still going to be cool to look back on now, um, yeah. and and have that same documentation. I did see. I think um, did you see David Bell, David Bell's post the other day? I think he turned. I think he's 48 something like this yeah and he was talking about age is just a number blah, blah 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 something like this exactly that was really crazy um it was really interesting for me to see like he i think what he said was i'm better now at parkour than i was when i was 20 years old which is very <laughs> interesting because he's still you know he's got another 10 years on us oh yeah so not yeah was he 48 is he 48 is he in his 40s yes 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 I met him so in 46 or something like this, like in Hiroshima. So, yeah, and, he's got... He's got... He, jumped, he jumped with me and Foskey. We were jumping <laughs> in a, a little bit. So, it was yeah, cool. yeah. we had this moment yeah. that we were jumping and then start coming more people and start filming stuff and then he just went away. So, do you think he's, <laughs> do you think he's better at parkour than he was when he was 20? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, no, physically, but he knows more for sure. Yeah, yeah. There's many ways to interpret that, I guess. Yeah. Um. So, what's the next? What's the, what's your plans? You know, outside of COVID, are you are you going to compete in the Art of Motion if it's this year? Are you going to keep I'm doing speed too, comps? I'm getting too old for these men. I I only compete if there is free travel and that's that's <laughs> the main reason because then i can hang out with my friends and but i was i was thinking more in putting effort into youtube i will i will put some effort into my youtube channel try to make some living out of that and plus extra jobs because and these days like it's that i don't have a job right now i was coaching in the gym because i quit peter parkour and then i had at four as a sponsor for a little bit but they decided to not have athletes anymore so it's finished and now i'm like okay i'm gonna teach because at least i'm doing what i like and i actually like to i enjoy coaching if the people are interested i like to coach yeah and that's good fun way yeah yeah and I keep training. Uh, every time I'm coaching, I'm also training. I'm stretching. In case if I don't coach, I don't stretch. I just be lazy and go home and like, ah. Uh. But um, besides the coaching, yeah, I try to, to do my YouTube and let's see what happens next. A couple of things there. One, I don't know, uh, it might be something you've done, but 
there's a big there's a big push into the um you know the Ido Ido Portal movement space at the moment. You know you know Ido right? Um, yes. Yeah, and I found a pretty healthy market for people that wanted to learn parkour in that space. They, the whole fear thing, you know, overcoming fear seems to be something that hadn't been, you know, within the movement community, they hadn't thought about too much. And introducing that to them, there was like, I, I, I ran a bunch of workshops last year up the east coast of Australia. Um, running it to movement practitioners um who were just interested in like upskilling and learning more skills so um and they generally have a bit more money than your your common parkour practitioner (laughs) yeah i know i know but in portugal it's not so big of a market anyway uh okay yeah it's taken off huge here man yeah it depends on the country like australia is a little bit uh, a few years in front I've been there yeah. and I can see it's like a little bit in front. Even yeah. e- even like Netherlands, it's much better for like supporting sport activities than Portugal. Portugal is like football, Ronaldo, eh, beer, snails, and <laughs> beach. <laughs> the, the other thing is I would love to like, yeah, um, I'm on the current journey of wanting to upload more as well. And uh, so I don't know, man, I'll set you a bit of a challenge. You need to need to get it going how what would be realistic for you how often do you reckon you would upload uh to be honest uh, maybe once a month or two a month that's mm. a goal that i can do if i'm like saying okay i'm gonna do a video every week yeah i can do it but it's not gonna be like a video to grow like depends what we're talking about about yeah. training videos i can do more often but I mean, like POVs that are good ideas and they probably go viral. Maybe I can do one a month, something like this. Because Two. The, the hardest thing about the creation part is having the idea. After you have the idea, everything can happen. You just have yeah. to make things work. Like, okay, what I need to, I, I have an idea now. I'm going to do a video running away from Louis because Louis is going to be a police and I'm going to be with handcuffs. And look what I just ordered. <laughs> then, i'm gonna film tomorrow <laughs> That's awesome awesome, to awesome. <laughs> all right well two a month for the next three months i reckon you should try and stick to that that would be awesome to see i will try i have two ideas already so this is yeah, one the next one is still like i need more people to help sometimes you need people on the on the videos yeah. uh, mm. sometimes it's hard to get people out of home in quarantine so let's see but yeah. maybe i have good friends <laughs> have you have you gotten on the tiktok tiktok train you you've, you've been using tiktok right have you seen yeah. any success there uh, not really <laughs> mm, i had like mm. a video with me uh, a million half a million views like 500k yeah and then some like 80s three, 30 and then starts to go like 1k 2k 3k something like this and then 80 it's random it's completely random so we we do have one question here from uh 10 may he's saying what advice do you uh what advice do you for new practitioners when it comes to sharing their parkour journey and content should they be doing instagram only or should they be also doing youtube and give it time and effort well we kind of answered a fair, fair bit of that um but i think I mean, do you want to take some of this? Yeah, it, I can say. Like, for I have an, uh, something in mind. Like, I think it can be really interesting, a perspective of someone that is starting parkour and learning everything from beginning. How they feel and what they think of things they are doing right now when they're starting. Because I know how it is, but most of people that are out there, they don't know. So maybe it's of interesting course, yeah. for someone. So you always can do that on YouTube vlogging you can also do instagram but instagram if you don't have uh, if you're starting instagram is going to be harder to grow it's easier to grow as a vlogger because you are showing your personality than showing your skill that you still didn't develop so much develop or develop i don't know how to say this word can you help me De- develop <laughs> yeah develop okay. develop i think i yeah, said, yeah, yeah. It, said it like 20 times wrong but it's okay <laughs> <laughs> develop Mm. Yeah, to add to that, I think, um, in my opinion, it would be use as many of the platforms as possible at the moment because 
you, for one, if you're still very early on, you, there might be one, you know, there might be one that you, you may not know what you'd like to do yet. So part of the ex exploration process and learning is finding out what, you know, there's a very particular style of content that's created on TikTok. There's a very particular style that's created on Instagram and there's a particular style on YouTube and they're three different things and they don't all appeal to everyone, you know, like, yeah. um, you know, so try it all. Then there is like, especially YouTube and, and TikTok right now are giving so like there the algorithm can pick you up and you can get views there. And as Pedro said, like, this is something I've thought about a lot is, is it doesn't matter where along your journey are, as long as you're not asserting yourself as being an expert. So as long as if you've been training one or two years and you're saying, Hey, I'm an expert, you uh, expert park or athlete. Well, sorry, that's, that's not true. But if you're being <laughs> genuine and you're honest about your journey and you're just documenting the journey of getting uh, good at parkour, that is going to resonate with someone. There might be someone that's under, like earlier on in their journey or there might be someone that's been doing it for a while that thinks it's entertaining as well. So if yeah. you're being genuine with who you are, there's, I mean, if, you, if you're from India, I mean, there's the, you have a very large population. There's a lot of people there. Like, and I know from comments that, that I've had over the years, there's, there's a lot of people who, who are interested in parkour in India. Um, India has a big community. I've been there in the national gym and it's big. Yeah, exactly. So there's a there's an audience for you for sure. So I guess to wrap that question up, it's it's definitely you do need to give it time. It's going to take time and effort. Um, and I would personally use as many of the platforms as possible at the start, and then maybe over time you'll find one, or maybe you won't. Maybe you'll stay on on all all of them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it also awesome. is good for you to start using all of them just to to also understand how they work. Because you, you, if you're starting right now, you're not going to know how to, what is working better here, what it works better on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or YouTube. You have to try and you have to watch a lot so you can understand how it works. And then you, after you understand, maybe you decide, okay, I don't want TikTok. This is lame. Or I don't want YouTube. It's too much effort or something like this. Or Facebook is just for old people. Yeah. Like you can think whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny that that's become the case that Facebook is 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 uh, where the older audience is now, which is crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah, because it's a generation. It happens yeah, yeah. to appear in the in a in a time of some generation, and now the Instagram, and then the TikTok, and then after whatever it comes after, uh, it's always going to be like this. So if you want to have a um, a consistent follow i would go for youtube because youtube never dies youtube has yeah. been since the beginning until now reliable uh, facebook whoa my no myspace no i5 uh, myspace uh, facebook instagram tiktok it's like always like yeah youtube is sure. the most reliable <laughs> I guess the last thing I want to talk to you about is is just like the current state of parkour. Like, do you feel like there's 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 people that sit on different ends of the fence here? There's there's some people that are saying it's dropped off. There's it's not as active. But then, you know, you see stuff like Storo and their growth and and how much they're growing and continually growing. And I I totally recognize that not everyone that follow, well probably a large percentage of Storo's audience actually don't do parkour. They're just casual listeners. No. But, yes. Sure. Uh, but ca ca casual watches but even that alone though if there's five million people out there or whatever whatever they're up to now if there's six million that are interested in the sport there's a way to convert those people into practitioners if we really wanted to or not convert that sounds a bit um like um <laughs> it's like a religion but you know there's a there's a way to turn them into to to um practitioners and there's there's an interest there and i'm sure a lot of those are young kids as well that may be looking for the sport that they're going to do in the future yeah like what do you what do you feel about the current state of parkour and where it's at i think it was already like more popular but it's always like in waves because it depends on uh, where people can find it sometimes there is like this local uh, like portuguese uh, telenovela or series that brings parkour up and then a lot of people remember oh parkour i want to know more about this and they look up parkour 
So if it goes in a in a famous show parkour or whatever, it grows again and then goes down and then up again because people think oh, I want to do this, but they don't realize how hard it is and how much effort you have to put into training. So they give up. There is a lot of people coming in yeah. and out all the time, and some people stay. And this this is gonna be like this forever, I think. Mm, yeah. Um. I was. It was interesting. I, I heard some of the stats uh, of when, like, um, like the the increase that we actually had when, like, when, like, I think it was Jump London and Jump Britain ha happened. Um, obviously, it was the initial wave, but I'd never really given any thought that those mainstream television shows really that people used to watch television in such a way that a documentary would come out and m like hundreds Boom. of thousands of people. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, you know, I guess, oh, I guess, but that's because the crazy thing is those Stora are constantly getting, I guess it's so spread out around the world that it's really hard to be tangible. Right. I guess when jump London or jump Britain aired, it was within a, it was within one country. So there was a, boom within the one country so that's why i feel like parkour on a global basis is probably growing at a steady rate no it's but then for sure it... growing but the thing is before when it started it was something that nobody knew something mm. completely new it's like an alien coming out of space arriving like everyone will look oh wow what is this wow now everyone knows what is parkour so parkour is clouds now oh clouds they're cool yeah cool parkour yeah nice but still yeah, yeah, it's yeah. growing but it's not new anymore everyone knows already what it is i remember in the beginning of training what are you doing here i'm training parkour par what it's like they didn't know what it was now everyone even the old people here know what parkour is yeah yeah you know you know you've been there as well like in the time that nobody knew what parkour was and you had to explain what parkour was. Yeah, this yeah, stuff of yeah. jumping buildings and doing backflips. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I'm gonna wrap it up there. It's getting pretty late here after Pedro getting up at one p.m. But uh, yes, I need you. to eat. I still didn't eat anything. <laughs> thank you so much for having a chat, man. It's just good to see you. It's been way too long, and hopefully, once all this crazy, you know covid stuff is over um people will start traveling again and i'll get to yes. see you obviously either at art of motion this year or you should come back out to australia at some point or oh, i've never been to portugal so come visit yes you can welcome you're uh, welcome here it's always blue sky look at this <laughs> oh <laughs> beautiful oh you guys are going into summer covid's gonna be oh. yes summer is coming <laughs> awesome man all righty well enjoy your breakfast and thank you so much for the chat all right see you man see you sometime around the world see you soon bro. <laughs> yeah bro ciao